to another edition of Sparky Help. This time we're going to be looking at lighting and the simple calculations. So we have inverse square law, the cosine law, and the lumen method. So let's start looking at the first one. So the inverse square law consists of this formula, E equals I over D squared. How does this actually work? What does it apply to? Well, let's have a quick look how it works and what these letters actually mean. So inverse square law, so we've got E is the light measured at a surface. So it's the amount of light received on a surface, hence illumination, and it's measured in lux or lumens per meter squared because it's the area of which the light hits. I is the luminous intensity, which is considered to be the brightness, so it's the output. And that's measured in candela and given the symbol CD. And in D is the distance the light has travelled. And obviously, as normal, that's measured in metres. How does this basically work? Why is it squared, inverse square? Well, let's look at how that actually works. And we're all familiar with this, that if you shine a light on something, if it's close up, it will be relatively bright. So here we have one metre away, it has one square. If you double the length in this case it goes down by a quarter so that's basically what happens with lighting in general every time you double the length the light received at the surface has dropped by a quarter hence the inverse square and if we go up again it will dr drop but inversely proportional which basically means the further away you get the duller it will be when received at the surface and if we go from two to four meters it has dropped by a quarter from two to four. So like I say, every time you double the distance, the light received drops by a quarter. As always with these things, let's look at an example. So here we have a question, a luminaire above a surface, 2.4 meters. Its in luminous intensity is a thousand candelas. Calculate the light level directly below. So the easiest ones you can do. So there's our light, there's our distance. We need to calculate it. Let's put the figures in then. So there's our formula, we put our figures in, that's 1000 divided by 2.4 metres squared, and once you do that, you'll get an answer of 173.6 lux, or lumens per metre squared. It is another unit you could put next to that. So that's the light received directly below. Relatively straightforward, yet another formula to remember. The other one to use, uh, the cosine law of illuminance, basically consists of, well, we, obviously lighting doesn't just light directly below, it also lights in all other directions wherever the light happens to be shining. So you have the angle. So it starts off as the same formula, E equals I over D squared, and then you're multiplied by the cosine of the angle. The thing to note on this one, it's the distance the light has traveled and you can see on my drawing there that d is the diagonal it's the hypotenuse of the triangle and the cosine is based on the angle uh, from the light itself and let's look at what they all mean and how it works so as, as before light measured at a surface the same as before lumens or lux luminous intensity is the brightness again d is the distance but this time as we've said is the diagonal and then the cosine is the angle from the light itself. And that's what we need to put in. So let's look at a calculation. A luminaire is installed and we'll calculate it on the diagonal at this point. So there's our light, it's 1500 candelas. It's 2.4 meters up, but it's 1.4 meters away. So as always with these sort of questions, if you get them, there's often something you need to do in order to do the calculation. So this time we don't know D, or we don't know the angle on this one as well. So we start with our formula, and we can put in what we do know, and that's the 1500. We still don't know what D squared is, and we don't know the cosine of the angle. So good old trigonometry now. Pythagoras kicks in. So let's start with Pythagoras, and to find that distance, it's those two sides squared and then added together and then square root so 2.4 squared plus 1.8 squared and then square root your answer that gives us a distance of three meters so that's d sorted what we then can do is put that into our calculation we now need to work out the cosine so the cosine of the angle is adjacent over hypotenuse so that becomes the 2.4 divided by 3 it gives us a value of 0.8 what you mustn't do is press cosine when you put this in. Just do 2.4 divided by 3.8, and that's all that needs to go into the formula when you do the calculation. 
because obviously it's coming at an angle, it's got a longer distance. The lighting level now we have 133.3 lux or lumens per meter squared. Let's apply it to a slightly different, more real world, I suppose, but even that isn't particularly complex. This one, this consists of just two lights. So what we want to do is we work out the light below each of those two lights. So it will be lit from directly above, but it'll also be lit by from the diagonal from each lamp in the opposite corner. So we can do, first of all, we can do the first one. That's E equals I over D squared. That's 1500 divided by 2.4. And that gives us a value of 260.4 lux directly below each of those lights. So at point A and point B, it is at least 260. However, it's also lit from the diagonal. This time I've given you the diagonal, so I've given you the three. So we can put that in, but what we need is the angle. Well, this is from the same question that looked up a minute ago. So that becomes 1500 divided by three squared times the 0.8. So diagonally, you get a lighting level of 133.3 lux. So you now have a total of those two. So what we can therefore do is add those two values together. And that will give us the lighting level at A and B. So therefore, what we end up with is 393.7 lux at point A and point B. Now let's look at the Lumen method. The Lumen method is a quite handy one if you want to know how many fittings you need, or we just can all be rearranged. Uh, so it's a straightforward one if you know the lighting level and all the other bits and pieces that you need to know. And we'll look at what all these things mean. So. Let's look at N. N is the number of luminaires required. So the number of light fittings you're going to need. OK, that's what we're trying to find. What is E? E is the luminance required in lux. So typical office space, you might look for 500 lux. Um, if it was a staircase, you might go for 300, if you, uh, whatever it happens to be. So if you know what has been set, you can put that figure in there. What is A? Well, A is the area of the room that you were lighting in the first place. So this is in metres squared. So if it's three metres by three metres, it would be three times three goes in there, OK, to give you your area. And you're going to divide these by, first things first, the light output, the lumen output of each lamp or each luminaire. OK, and the reason I say each lamp, because you might have an older style fluorescent, twin fluorescent, if anyone's ever going to fit those anymore. And there will be two lamps in there, and each of those lamps would have a lumen output. But if not, whatever it is, it's the total lumen output per fitting that you're going to put up. And then we have this thing called MF, uh, maintenance factor. That maintenance factor is often set by the exam questions. They'll, they'll give them if, they, if there's any in there. Uh, otherwise, it's something you have to, may have to pick yourself, or your, the specification might be set for you, or the lighting manufacturer. But MF is actually made up of all these different things on here. So there's all these different uh, and acronyms. You've got LLMMF, so Lamp Lumen Maintenance Factor. And what that's basically saying there is, and manufacturers will quote these, how much of their the light output will reduce over time, because obviously that does happen for us in lighting famous for it that over periods of time the light output will drop they get gradually worse so manufacturers will give you these figures then you've got the lamp survival factor so after a period of time how many of those lamps will still be working then you've got the lmf the luminaire maintenance factor and as it says on there reduction in light output due to dirt deposited on the luminaire so this is how harsh the environment is so if you're working in a really dusty environment you're going to lose light output because of dust. And dust will just generally build up in all cases anyway, but this comes into play uh, where you're going to install it. And then you've got the room surface maintenance factor. So this is the actual room. How dirt is it going to get? Because we rely on reflectance of walls. And if walls become dirty over time, their reflectance will drop. The light output will reduce as well in various locations and certainly will appear darker. So that is all replaced by one number. And it's normally, if it comes out at one, basically what you're saying is that light will not deteriorate and neither will anything else. So typically it's about 0 0.8, 0 0.9, 0 0.95. It's a decimal point of some description. So that's what typically goes in there. And then we have utilization factor. 
So this, again, is given by manufacturers or you decide yourself or the exam question will give it to you. But this is based on a various different things. And one of the things is reflectance of the ceilings, walls and floors. So we can see on here, see ceiling, wall and floor, if you can see that there. And what we're saying is ceilings, depending on the colour of the ceiling, will have about 70% reflectance. And you'd choose this. This is from a larger table. You'd, you'd pick one you, you think would fall into that category. And there are charts and the lighting manufacturers would provide information on what percentages each colour may give. And the walls will reflect about 50% and the floors about 20%. And as you can see, they can change depending on what the environment happens to be. And then this is cross-referenced against these values here, which is your room index. Your room index is based on a formula. Of course it is. So there is a formula that goes with this, and it's to do with the room area and the height that the luminaire is placed above the working plane. So you'll see the formula, and it should be appearing now, so you'll be able to see what that formula is, and it comes out as a number. So if you come out as a number of, say, let's say 2.5, and, and you check it against a ceiling and walls and floor of 70 50 and 20 then you get this number of 85 and what 85 it's not it doesn't go into 85 it goes in at 0 0.85 and that's your uf so uf is the utilization factor and it's how good the lights are how high they are how big the room is and how what the walls are reflecting and all those other bits and pieces so again these would be given to you so like i say there's a, quite a bit of information goes into this but typically about 0 0.8 0 0.9 0.95 um, would go into these values here. As always, the best thing to do is do a calculation. So we've got calculate the number of luminaires required to illuminate a room six by eight meters. We want a lighting level of 500. The, each luminaire, each fitting effectively gives out 4,900 lumens. And we have a maintenance factor and a utilization factor of 0.91 and 0.93 respectively. So we can put this into this formula. So E and A and F and M, F and U, F, we have them all here. We can put them in 500 lux times the area, which is 6 times 8. And then you divide that by 4,900 times 0 0.91, 0 0.93. And that gives us this value, which is the number of luminaires. So it comes out 5.78. Obviously, you can't buy 5.78 luminaires. So you're going to round it up to 6. So six luminaires is what you're going to install. How easy is that? Now let's look at colour temperature, colour rendering, efficacy and some other technical information that you may have seen many times before but not completely understood what they happen to be. So I have some information from Thorn. This is their pop pack. Pop packs have been around for years. Uh, traditionally they've got a fluorescent since it still looks like a fluorescent but this is their led version of the pop pack so we're going to extract some information out of this and figure out what most of this information will mean so let's look at color temperature first this one says complete with 4000 k led well 4000 k is the kelvin scale as we can see on here and it's a temperature scale if you remember from your school days that the Kelvin scale is absolute zero, which is zero degrees Kelvin, which is minus 273.2 roughly degrees C. So Kelvin scale is this thing here. And as we associate on a thousand K, look, it's on the red end of the spectrum. So it's red. And then as you get hotter and hotter, it ends towards the blue. Um, the irony of it is when it gets to the blue end, we associate blue with cold so hence we might see lamps that say cool white or you'll see warm white and if you see warm white they're down towards the yellow end of the spectrum more towards the red because we associate the yellows and reds with warm so this one 4000k is pitched roughly in the middle so it's on the verge going from one to another so it's a, the color of the light effectively that you're going to get out of it how directly white it happens to be this one is the color rendering and this one's given a color and rending index of 80, which basically means on this that it will give out a fairly good light that the, the colors you see under this light will look like the colors they happen to be. So reds will look like reds, yellows will look like yellows. Obviously, if that was 100, it would be bang on pretty much what daylight would be under the sun under normal conditions. But you can see from these two pictures that you can see on here, these are the same color balls, but under different color lighting. 
and they look completely different. If you've ever come across sodium lights, which used to be old street lights that were the yellow looking coloured ones, you try and look at a red car under a sodium lamp, it doesn't look red. So if you're trying to light a spraying workshop, you wouldn't put sodiums in. You'd want to put some lighting in that has very good colour rendering, that the colours look the colours they're supposed to be. So that's what the colour rendering is. So 80 is pretty good, 100 would be spot on. Let's look at this one then. Rated median useful life. So this is on average how, how long will it last, uh, the light output of it. And this one, this manufacturer has said it's L80, 50,000 H at 25 degrees C. What that basically means is that after 50,000 hours at 25 degrees C, 80% of the light will still be given out. And I've done a quick calculation so you can see what we're talking about here. It says based on an eight hour day, if we do that calculation, so eight hour day into 50,000 hours for 365 days a year, that will basically last uh, for 17.1 years, which is a pretty long time for lighting to last. So, it, you know, when they give these figures out in LEDs, they are going to, they should, on theory, in theory, last a long, long time. Probably outlive the building itself. So if you were putting these in offices, for instance, the office might get refurbished again in 10 years time. But there's still another seven years worth of light still left in those, those fittings. But you'll probably replace them because they probably look old by now. Let's look at this one here, Luminaire Input Power. So it says it's a 36 watt lamp. And this one does have a power factor. People often think, well, they're LEDs, they don't have a power factor. Well, they often do. It's just... Luckily, the, the wattage of LED fittings is so small compared to traditional lighting, but it still has a power factor in it. So how do you work that one out? It's power divided by volts times the cosine, which is the power factor. So that becomes 36 divided by 230 times 0.95. So each of these fittings will draw 0.15 of an amp, which is quite important to know, because obviously if you're doing loading, we need to make sure we've got enough power for it. I know you can fit a lot of these on a, a traditional lighting circuit, but this calculation still exists and we still need to know it. Let's look at this one then. Very important one to be aware of, um, and that is the efficacy of like efficacy, efficacy, however you want to pronounce it, of the actual lighting itself. And that's the lumens divided by the watts. So you can see the light output, uh, luminous flux is 4,900. And we divide that by the wattage, and that gives us a efficacy of 136.1 lumens per watt. Okay, so it's not a percentage, it's the amount of lumens output for every watt that you put in. So it's pretty good, 136. If we go back to an incandescent lamp, you'd have been lucky to push about 15 lumens per watt. So we know we've moved on a long way uh, before we, you know, to get where we are now with LEDs. Uh, as I say, incandescent lamps, that's the filament wires, would give out more heat than they would do light in comparison. But nowadays, it's all about the light output and they don't get anywhere near as hot as they used to. So the lumens per watt has increased enormously. So they're very efficient, if you want to look, if we can want to use that word, let's attempt to use it. If I look at this one, though, this one is the an equivalent uh, of this light, this information here. This one comes from a another leading store in the UK uh, that sells fittings and lots of other things and screws for instance that is one of the things they sell but this one their, their particular version of it we can see on there uh, the lumen output is 4050 uh, the wattage for this one is 45 watts so and if you look at the efficacy of this one it's 90 lumens per watt uh, so what does that basically mean with well, it means it's you need more of them is the upshot of it to light the same room, if we go back to that previous question on the lumen method, you'd need more of these ones from this shop than you would do the Thorn one. I'm not advertising Thorn, it just happens to be a Thorn one I happen to look at. So always have a check, look at the efficacy of lighting, but it's lumens per watt. The higher the number, the better. So I hope this has been useful uh, for you to look at and revise for anyone doing level three exams. Thank you very much. Please like and subscribe.